Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, January 9th, 2012. Our top story comes from the world of nanotechnology. A team at the ASTAR Institute of Materials Research and Engineering have been testing gold nanoparticles as a method of killing cancer. You see, most metallic nanostructures have a frequency of light that excites their surface electrons, and this resonance generates heat. For this application, the nanoparticles needed to be excitable from any angle and have a resonance with certain infrared wavelengths. So they made gold nanocrosses by adding some copper ions to a solution that normally produces nanorods. Then they bound these nanocrosses to the surface of human lung cancer cells to test this photothermal treatment. After these initial experiments, they hope to move to animal testing soon. And from the world of biotechnology, the U.S. Department of Energy, working mainly with UC Berkeley, is developing computer-assisted design tools for biological applications. Computer-assisted design, aka CAD, is what makes modern microchips possible, and hopefully these kinds of tools will accelerate synthetic biology. One of the main overall goals is the development of systems that produce safe and renewable chemicals such as plastics and fuels. Due to the inherent complexity of biological systems, developing effective CAD tools won't be easy. However, these first steps are extremely promising. They were able to design stimulations that could help create functional complex RNA structures. 28 of the devices designed using CAD were made for E. coli and tested, showing an incredible 94% correlation between predicted and actual functionality. Scientists working with the Department of Energy have already used these tools to improve biofuel production and will eventually improve and expand their efforts. Finally, we end with an update from the field of neuroscience. A team from Yale University may have found a candidate gene involved with major depression. The goal was to find a way to link subjective measures of depression with their biological underpinnings, such as analyzing MRI scans revealing size and activity variations in brain areas while also monitoring gene expression. The idea is to use these kinds of discoveries to help predict, measure, and treat depression. Although. More study of this particular gene is needed, and there are likely multiple genetic factors involved with this and other psychiatric conditions. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.